take our text this morning from John 10, 10th chapter of John. Read a few verses here, starting with verse 30 and reading through verse 36. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I and my Father are one. Then, G- then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. We know as Christians that we serve God, that Jesus is the Son of God. But we look this morning into scripture and take a look at that idea, that reality that Jesus is the Son of God, His deity. Amen. If we come through the Christmas season, that Jesus came from heaven to be a baby, to be born, but also uh, did not end there. We know that He uh, lived a life as a man. <clears throat> in fact, the Bible tells us He was uh, found in fashion as a man but that he also was completely God. So these three things kind of tie together. Jesus, the Son of God, he said of himself. Others said the same thing, which we'll look at. And that he said, I am from above, not from this world. And also that he is eternal. He is the eternal one. All reinforcing his uh, deity, his, his uh, part of the Godhead, the Trinity. So they say here they're, they're very angry with the Lord because he, uh, the words he was saying, and it goes back to verse 30 when they were angry, and he says, I and my Father are one. This word that they, uh, this Hebrew word that he uses was applied sometimes to magistrates or uh, the honorable men. It was rarely used, but on occasion, uh, they would use this in authority and reverence. In fact, we read, we can read in Exodus, the fourth chapter, in the 16th verse. uh, This is the Lord speaking to Moses about Aaron, and he says, And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. So it's not a replacement for God. It is a messenger or a representative of God or that you, will, you are sent to show them me, God would, would say. Not that Moses was in place of God. Also in Exodus 7, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. So they're not saying, the Bible doesn't say here that he is, he is a God, but a representative of God. The wording is, yeah. is that way, that he is, he is sent to show them God. And we know that, that Moses did that. Yeah. He showed through his power, through, through God's power, and through Moses as a vehicle of that power, that God showed himself strong to the Egyptians, to Pharaoh. And uh, so this is what the Lord is referencing here. And so this made these people very angry since they thought of themselves pretty highly. And so it wasn't really so much out of blasphemy they were angry about, but arrogance. They wanted to to kill him because he was putting himself above them, and certainly he was. He says, in your law, in the law that you read, you claim to know and to to quote and, and live by. That's Psalm 82 that he references there. 82 verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and of all, and all of you are children of the Most High. So you are representatives. 
So he's just reinforcing what has been said before. You're, you're, you want to stand and you want to quote and you want to uh, live by this law, but you're not doing it. But Jesus here, the Son of God, he says uh, in, in verse 35 of our, our scripture, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So we read in the Bible that oftentimes the Bible tells us, and the word of God came unto them saying. Yeah. But never, we never read that about Jesus. Jesus was the word. Mm -hmm. The word didn't have to come to him. God did not have to send him the word. He was the word. He spoke directly yeah. the words of the Father. There, were, there, was no, uh, there was no interpretation needed. Mm. What God sent to him, he spoke. Amen. And he said, I believe it's in John 17, that he's here to, to glorify the Father. Uh -huh. He tells them here if in verse 37 of uh, chapter 10 of John, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. If I've done nothing to represent God, if I've done no works, then you don't have to believe me. But, the next verse says, but if I do, though, if, if, but if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Amen. Jesus was not out to to condemn them, but to, uh, as he does even today with us, speak so plainly, uh, is very, uh, makes it very easy to understand. If, if you can't believe, if, if I've done no works, then don't believe it. But look at what's happened. Look what God has done through, through Jesus on earth. Amen. Then believe for that, just for the work's sake. Believe these things, but they, they were uh, determined not to do so. Others recognized Jesus as the Son of God. God himself solidified the fact by speaking from heaven when Jesus was baptized. In Matthew 3, yeah. verse 17, he says, uh, we read here, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. I often wonder of this, these times when the Lord speaks from heaven, when God speaks out of heaven. Was it a booming voice? Did everybody fall to their knees? Uh, was it a still small voice that everybody just heard? Whatever the voice was, the confirmation is there that God said from heaven, this is my son yeah. Yeah. in whom I am well pleased. We also can read the similar words on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew 17. When he says, this is my son, hear ye him. Amen. In Mark 5, verse 7, we see that even demons recognize the Lord and who he was. Mark 5, 7 when he came to the man uh, that was invaded by demons and he was living in the tombs and cutting himself and, and they couldn't be, he couldn't be bound. And the Lord came to him and landed on the shores there. And it says in verse 6, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him Amen. and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? So even, even a, a possessed man recognized that Jesus was the Son of God. And here, these uh, supposed righteous men refused to see it. When Peter walked on the water, and he was afraid, and he began to sink, you may remember that story, and the Lord reached out to him and pulled him up out of the out of the the crashing waves <clears throat> and it says in in Matthew chapter 14 verse 32 and when they were coming to the ship after the Lord had rescued him and they walked back to the ship the wind ceased Amen. then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying of a truth thou art the son of God yeah. so you see these things 
happen and the miracles that the Lord performs. Solidifying the fact, reinforcing the fact that he is the Son of God. Jesus, Son son of God, the, the one that we come to, the one that we turn to, the only one that can forgive us of our sins, the only one that shed his blood for our sins, the Son of God, the Most High God. John the Baptist said the same thing. This is truly the Son of God. Martha, in John chapter 11, says, We know, Lord, that that thou art the Son of God. She She was burdened. That her, son, that her brother had died and the Lord came to the rescue and he was trying to encourage Martha and tell her that it's going to be okay, I'm here. I am the resurrection and the life. And do you believe, Martha? And she said, we believe, Lord, that thou art the Son of God. Amen. So there's something in, in them, in us, that recognizes the deity, the holiness, and the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. In the scripture reading that Brother Terry read, the centurion there that stood by after the Lord was crucified, he said himself, the centurion that stood by, truly this man was the Son of God. It's, it's there to be recognized mm-hmm. if people will just recognize it. In this chapter, uh, in, in, that uh, this section of scripture that was read some of the most the, some of the saddest words to me in scripture when the Lord says in verse 34 in the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying Eloi Eloi lema sabachthani my God my God why hast thou forsaken me the son of the son of God himself hanging on a cross crucified beaten and suffering for our sin and there he was all alone. Why have you forsaken me? The very Son of God, there for all people to see. And this centurion recognized that, yes, from the events that have happened here, the ground shook, the earthquake, the veil of the temple was rent. Truly, this is the Son of God. We can say that this morning. Truly, we know that this is the Son of God. Amen. He says in John, the Lord does, John Chapter 8, verse 23. Then Jesus said unto them, When he when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. And do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things of. He references his Father. I am the Son of Man. The Son of uh, I am here as a man but I am the Son of God. We go back to verse 23, and he says, I, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath, you are from this world. I am from above. Amen. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. The Lord had told them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a place you can't go to. And they, they wondered on themselves, where, where is he going? Why can't we follow? And the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he saith, whither I go, ye cannot go. Jesus said, no. I'm not of this world. I'm from above. I came from heaven. I'm going to return to heaven. And I'll be there to intercede for you. He has a perspective, Jesus does, that we cannot have. Our thoughts are instinctively human. His thoughts are are instinctively heavenly. It's like a view from an airplane versus a, uh, a view from driving your car. We see just what's ahead of us. A view from above sees the road, uh-huh. sees what the obstacles ahead, the dangers, yeah. the best way to take. Amen. That's the perspective that the Lord has. He is from above. He sees the whole picture. Yeah not just what we can see. We are limited as, as people to see only what, just very, very uh, short view of what's before us. But I'm thankful we serve a God, serve a Savior who cares enough to look out for us down the road. Yeah. 
I was thinking that the Lord is, uh, how, how well the Lord takes care of us, even sometimes before he prepares us and watches out for us, even before we acknowledge him as our Savior, before we come and, and ask him to forgive our sins. Years ago, I was, uh, when we lived in Roseburg, I was, uh, worked in a sheet metal shop, and uh, they were trying to turn out some journeymen, and so I entered a course uh, uh, for, to, to get my sheet metal journeyman's card and went through that course and, and achieved that and had it uh, and had pretty much forgotten about it. And when uh, I worked for the school district, started there in 2016, and then in the fall, winter of 2018, this job came open that I have now, and you had to have some kind of um, certificate of HVAC or electrical or plumbing or something that would, so you could even get an interview. And I thought, well, I don't, I don't have an LME license or electrical license or plumbing license. And it dawned on me, I wonder if my sheet metal journeyman's card would work. So I called up the state, uh, builder's board. I called them and said, oh yeah, it never expires. So I said, well, send me that thing. And they sent me a copy and I was able to apply, apply for the job I have now because of, uh, because of that uh, card I received years ago. Amen. But I have to believe that God saw that way down the road. Sure. He prepared me for now. Uh, he, he prepared things long ago that I need, need him now. Yes. He looks out and he cares about our best he interests. Amen. He sees way down, way ahead. I'm thankful for that. His plans and ideas are only righteous. Men's are naturally selfish. His are righteous. We're thankful that God can come in and deal with that carnality and help us with, with those things. But naturally, men are selfish. People are selfish. But the Lord is righteous. Now we can access that righteousness, but we will we'll never be in our, human, in our humanity, only righteous, right? We, we, we are still, we still have humanity. Yeah. The Lord deals with the carnality. We are still humans, but we can rely on God. We can lean on him to help us uh, and uh, acquire that righteousness that he has to offer us. The wisdom that he has. James tells us of a wisdom that is from above is pure and peaceable, easy to be entreated. That is a part of our perfecting, part of our uh, sanctifying, removing and purging of self. The Lord is so gracious to help us in the, those areas. He says, I am the eternal one. John 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Let's go back a little bit. Verse 56, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. This is Jesus speaking. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and how hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. This is different from what this, this word rendered was in our language and am are, are different. The one was when he says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, it means Abraham was brought into being. The other I am means I exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. The statement, therefore, is not that Christ came into existence before Abraham, but that he never came into being at all, but existed before Abraham. Yeah. Had a, before Abraham even had a being. In other words, existed before creation or eternally. He was not created. He was. 
He is. In the, begin in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And we could add today, and the Word is God. Amen. He changed, changes not. So there are many references that tell us Jesus was with God in, in Genesis 1.1. The creation began, and the word used there, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is a, is a, is a plural. It, it doesn't mean a singular person. He uses that word God as a plural Elohim not El or Eloa. In the beginning, God, we, created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And again, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and we can say again, the Word is God. Amen. So what do we take from this? Jesus is not part of creation. He took part in creating. We have a Savior that no situation can surprise, can take him by surprise. There's nothing that he has not seen, nothing that he cannot conquer or has not conquered. We have a Savior who is the Son of God, Amen. who is part of the Godhead. But He's not only above and the Son of God, but He has returned to that place. We read in Hebrews that He has set down at the right hand of the majesty on high and that He resides there. John 14, comforting words we will close with this morning. He says, Let's not, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. I like that that's so personal. That the Lord says to his disciples, and we can read it on down through the years and apply this to us, I go to, to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Amen. We're going to have a song here in a minute. 638, does that work? Do you have one picked out, Brother Arthur? 638. 638. We'll sing this song as a song of closing, an invitation to prayer. But this Son of God, we need to know Him, not just who He is, not just that He is a Jesus, a name in history, but that, that He is the Son of God, the only one who can take away our sin, the only one who can make a difference in our life, yeah. the only one who looks out ahead and cares for us, the only one who has returned to heaven and is preparing a place for us, Amen. the only one who will step out and, and call us home in the rapture. We're looking forward to that. There is no situation in your life that he cannot handle. Amen. Nothing too big, nothing too small. Amen. The Lord is there for each and everything. We're going to Sing a song of, uh, of invitation. We'll have a time to pray.